Welcome back. Well, this was Ahmadinejad's first ever visit to Iraq. President Bush, by contrast, has visited twice. Yet the two leaders' visits have differed in both style and substance. Whereas President Bush's trips have been shrouded in secrecy, the Iranian president arrived with great fanfare, even driving from Baghdad airport to downtown. He came bearing gifts too, offering a $1 billion loan to build power plants in Iraq's Shia-dominated cities. And whereas Bush's visits have generally accompanied security demands of the Iraqis, Tehran signed a raft of trade and cultural agreements with Baghdad. Still, they perhaps have one thing in common. Many Iraqis reject what they see as occupation. First the United States, some would say, and now by Iran. And with the two holding three rounds of talks about the future of Iraq, the stability of Iraq is a common goal. But can their interests meet in Baghdad? Well, joining us again to discuss that question, our guest in Washington, D.C., Professor Michael Hudson, Director of the Middle East Program at Georgetown University. In London, Ghassan Atiyah, Director of the Center for Iraqi Studies. And in Tehran, Said Mohammed Marandi, Assistant Professor at Tehran University. Thank you all for joining us once again. If I could start once again with Mr. Ghassan Atiyah. Uh, the series of meetings that we've seen being held in Iraq between U.S. and Iranian officials, is that proof that perhaps the two countries can put other issues aside and cut a deal on how to manage Iraq? I think the, any negotiation between the Iranian and the American could be useful and personally I feel there is no other way other than uh, direct negotiations. The problem is this. The United States, while it like to discuss only Iraq, for the Iranian they would like to deal with all the files, with all the issues, not only with only Iraq. And in this sense, the Iranian, they have a price for helping the American in Iraq. The, are the American willing to pay the price? And we will see this bargaining. What we have seen today, the Iranian proved to, uh, to Washington that they are there in Baghdad with this full strength. On All the right, other I'm hand, sorry, the I want to jump in here because you, you made a very interesting analysis. Sorry to interrupt you. I want to bring in Said Mohammed Marandi into that. The, the all or nothing approach, is that the approach from Tehran in its negotiations with the U.S.? No, definitely not. The Iranians uh, are negotiating, have been negotiating with the Americans at the request of the Iraqi government. If the Iranians do not back the Iraqi government, Iran will be accused of being anti-Iraq. If they support the Iraqi government, they'll be accused of supporting the Kurds and the Shias. I think that's But let me put the question uh, this way. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, Mr. Marandi. What incentive would Iran have to perhaps help the U.S., so to speak, in the, in the Iraqi scenario without getting much in return on other files, like the nuclear file? Well, first of all, Iran is not helping the U.S. Iran wants to help Iraq. Iran has 1,200 kilometers of borders with the country. It had an eight-year-long war as a result of a, an invasion by the dictator Saddam Hussein. There is nothing more important than having good relations, strong relations with Iraq, because it would be both economically beneficial for the Iranians and for the Iraqi people, and it would bring about safety and security. So I think it's obvious that the Iranians should be trying to establish close ties. I think that, in fact, the I Iranian president, the very fact that he went to Iraq in such a way was to help boost Iraq and to help show it that it is a country that is open for business. What sort of, um, what sort of results happen when the American president secretly goes in and goes out? It doesn't give any confidence to the Iraqi people or the Iraqi government. So I think that the Iranians are not there to win the game. They're there to help the Iraqi people. But of course, the Americans want to divide and rule. They'll play the Shia Sunni card when they need it. But when the Iranians are helping the Palestinians, unlike Arab countries in the region, uh, they're not there uh, being accused of being pro-Shia. There they're supporting the Sunni uh, pa Palestinian population. All right, let's take some of those points to Michael Hudson in the U.S. Uh, Mr. Marandi making the case there that Iran has a vested interest in seeing a healthy, stable Iraq. Why can't the two countries cut a deal if that's the stated position, apparently, of both countries? Well, I think Professor Marandi's uh, interpretation uh, of the situation uh, from the Iranian point of view is extremely benign. Uh, I think Ahmadinejad uh, went to uh, Iraq not so much to help Iraq as to help himself and to help Iran, and I think indeed he did succeed in that. 
I think the Americans, uh, and particularly this administration, uh, looks at uh, the region as a whole. They're not just looking at the uh, Iraq situation. Uh, Washington will try to make uh, an accommodation with Iran and Iraq because there's a certain, at least, tactical parallelism of interests. But I think the Bush administration sees uh, this whole thing in a larger view. There's, of course, uh, a particular American uh, concern about uh, what our administration calls the global war on terrorism. And there's also uh, a concern that uh, the regional balance of power has been upset, uh, allowing uh, Iran to uh, 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 exert a new kind of hegemony uh, across the region, which is very worrisome, uh, not only to many uh, in Iraq itself, as we've just heard from Mr. Atiyev, uh, particularly among the nationalists and the Sunnis, but also, of course, among other Arab countries in the region. I think also we have to remember that the American uh, politicians and government leaders are very much uh, influenced uh, by the situation of Israel in the region. And one of the enduring uh, problems, I think, in any kind of an American-Iranian rapprochement is a widespread impression among American politicians, uh, not just the Bush administration, but also the presidential candidates that are, that are now campaigning, uh, that uh, Iran, and particularly a nuclear Iran, would be uh, a vital threat to uh, Israel. Okay, so if I, I, if I may jump in there, ca does the United States and Iran at least have in common a, sh a shared desire to see a stable, a somewhat stable Iraq, but perhaps one that isn't militarily strong to threaten anybody else in the region. Yes, I think there's a certain uh, uh, parallelism there. I think it's understandable that Iran, given its history with Iraq, would like to see uh, an Iraq, first of all, that is not too strong and certainly not aggressive, and one that is amenable to uh, Iranian influence or even domination. And I think the analogy between Syria and Lebanon and Iran and Iraq uh, that Mr. Atiyah made is actually quite, uh, quite uh, appropriate. So and if I there is that common interest, Ameri what's stopping a deal? What would it take from the U.S. perspective? Well, remember, from the U.S. perspective, the U.S. went into Iraq uh, on the mistaken impression that Saddam Hussein was much more dangerous than he was and that there was a connection between him and al-Qaeda. So the American motives, I think, might have been quite uh, positive. The execution was rather bad. And now, I think, uh, uh, an administration that uh, early on declared Iran to be part of an axis of evil is not likely uh, to change uh, this kind of a perception. And indeed, the three presidential candidates, uh, uh, Hillary uh, and, and Obama and McCain, each have right. said that all options are on the table with respect to future dealings with Iran, and that presumably includes a military option. Right, well, there are a lot of options on the table. We will continue, of course, to not only monitor them, but discuss them here in Inside Story. But at this point, we will have to thank our guest for joining us on this edition of Inside Story, Professor Michael Hudson from Washington, D.C., from Georgetown University, Ghassan Atiya from the Center for Iraqi Studies, and Said Marandi from Tehran University. Thank you all for being with us. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. As, as always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Feel free to email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. For now, it's goodbye. <laughs>